Well, my name's uh, Daniel Seekin. Here on this sunny day, uh, playing music at the River Garden in Brattleboro on Thursday, March 24th. No snow on the ground. Nice spring day. Here to sing a few songs. I began writing these songs, uh, oh, I'd say about 32, 33 years ago. Um, when I really started out in active activism, opposing militarism and uh, nuclear weapons. And these songs will reflect that. And uh, I'd be glad to explain them, uh, especially if you have any questions. Uh, or I will say a few words right before that give a give the song a little bit of a historical basis. Anyway, here goes. Gotta know from the general somewhere. I was in you do what you do. You say that you're taking care of us. You say that's in God that you trust. You're seeing through the lies that never disguise. I was in you do what you do. our lives like we're toys, so take your hands off the girls and the boys, I need you to ignore so I don't want to play no more, I would say you do what you do. It's approaching tax time, folks, and for years, uh, myself and people from the uh, Pioneer Valley War Tax Resistors have had a table out, usually in front of the post office, but now, this year, we're going to be in front of the uh, Brattleboro Food Co-op um, on tax day, which this year is on... Monday, April 18th, we'll be out there from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m., so be sure to stop by, but we'll have a literature table out there, and we'll be 
giving people uh, a lot of advice on how you may refuse to pay war taxes. This is what my little badge says here on my shirt here. Ask me about war, resisting war taxes. Gets me into a lot of conversations. Here's a little war tax resistance song I wrote. story is true. Uh, the part where a woman up north, and I met her one time a few years ago, she actually uh, went before the tax court in the state of Vermont because she had not, had not paid her federal income taxes because she was opposed to war. And the judge said, well, give me your records in your next court appearance. So what does she do? She comes in for her next court appearance and gives the judge a record of Joan Baez. I said, I said Joan Baez just to make it rhyme. That usually draws a chuckle or two. Um, There's a little story about the the Thames River Plowshares. There's a group of seven people who set out on a little boat and they approached a Trident submarine, which has the capability of completely destroying the earth. 
Anyway, this is about 30 years ago. The Thames River plowshares set out in the cold, cold morn. Seven people set out in the cold, cold morn. it is because especially today because we're faced with so many things that are gone wrong people largely um, don't want to hear about it and I in a way I can't blame them um, anyway here's a little story about myself when I was walking down a country road one day Sandra, <laughs> I'm very glad you came. <laughs> Much is stolen from us and the earth and the sky that gives comfort and wealth to a few. But our conscience can never be taken away. And it's there for whatever we do. With our eyes, with our ears, our hands and our feet, and the blood circulating our veins. With our fingers and toes and our mouth and our nose. And it all goes direct to our brains. In these times I'm aware of a struggle inside between conscience and comforts I've known. As a touch would pull apart like water and oil, it is clear only one can I own. Try this now. Purchase this. Experience that. The comforts cry out with a boast. When walking these hills, 
there's a voice inside that tells me what matters most. There are times when I'm feeling the sadness and fear of the pain that conscience will bring. And dear friends gather round and we lift ourselves up and we laugh and we play and we sing. In these times I'm aware the struggle inside between conscience and comforts I've known. As they touch but pull apart, like water and oil it is. The one thing I can know. Thank you. And now, a more recent tune that I um, put together. Some of my experiences of courts and jails and federal prisons Nonviolent, of course. Judge, tell me, why so high up there? Makes me kind of nervous, but I think that's what you want. Turn me loose, Judge. Don't let the bad guys get away. The prosecutor sure does have your eye. You look at me. says order must prevail but then it's legal to burn the earth to hell turn me loose judge don't let the bad guys get away Judge, 
let the bad guys get away. Any drops of water wear away a stone. It gives me strength when I feel so all alone. Turn me loose, judge. Don't let the bad guys get away. Drifting in, and that's good to see and hear. Here comes two more buffaloes. <laughs> <laughs> Got more. Yeah. Yeah, we're at the River Garden here in Brattleboro. And now that we have a little bit of an audience, uh, I'm going to sing a song. It's about climate change. My latest adventure, but not my, not my primary passion. My primary passion is opposing war, but very close to it, at least for me, is uh, climate change. That's where the young people are. We old people are. Uh, at least in the anti-war movement, there aren't too many young people in it. So. They don't know it. <laughs> yeah, they, I guess they haven't really experienced war like, like Russ has, who's back there filming this whole thing. Now, what was I gonna do? Climate change. Climate change, yes, that's right. <laughs> See what happens when you get old. <laughs> now, I'm going to go through the lines, uh, and you can repeat them back in song form. Got to get the right melody here, the right beat. Trains for unifiers. This train's 
for unifiers, this train. This train's for unifiers, this train. This train's for unifiers and climate change deniers. This plane for unifiers, this train. And the most important one, the last one, this train is lots of fun. This train is lots of fun. Lots of fun, this train. This train is lots of fun for each of us and everyone. This train is lots of fun. This train, one more time. This train is lots of fun. This train. This train is lots of fun. This train. This train is lots of fun for each of us and everyone. This train is lots of fun. And another climate change song, which I came up with. are showing us what's false and what is true. Let's organize and energize to lower the CO2. This is your line. Keep it in the ground. Keep it in the ground. The sound that's going company and Morgan was a horse it's a kinder Morgan horse and no pipeline of course in the ground so our kids can have a future yes
Here's a song I wrote a long time ago. You can think about it many ways. Anyway. shines in your eyes is mystical to see your gentle way of facing fear looks so good to me can I go away with you is there room for me to pack my bags and I'll get my coat a song about, uh, oh well, it sort of explains itself. I 
I need ten thousand dollars to sing a song with you. Taxes for bonds, taxes for missiles, taxes for all the things that kill. a song I wrote back in about 1985. That's just when all the Trident submarines were being launched and commissioned just about two every year. And a group of us would be going down there for these big launchings and commissionings that drew about each time about 5,000 people. One Trident submarine knock out 409 separate cities. It gives you the, some idea of the strength of a Trident submarine. And they're still out there, about 17 of them, virtually silent, because the, the country never knows where they're at. They could be right off their shore, and they wouldn't have any idea of it. that a Trident is out there. be getting arrested and going down there for court appearances and trials regularly. I heard about a boat being launched one day around Long Island Sound. So I went on down to check it out. This is what I found. Big and black and has a whole world hostage. Can't be heard, can't be seen. It's the end of the world and it's a trident to a submarine. Well, the police and dogs and the Ku Klux Klan were there to protect genocidal order. And the rest of us were told to stay behind the police line border. 7,000 Hiroshima's cost about three billion or two. It's a first strike weapon and it's aimed at me and you. Well, the tense moments came when the bus appeared, carrying the spectators to the show. But many resisted and the police persisted in dragging bodies out of the road. What's well, big and black and has the whole world hostage. Can't be heard, can't be seen. It's the end of the world and it's a trident to submarine. Well, the flags were flying and the speakers were lying while champagne broke on the bow. And while thousands cheered, a few voices appeared shouting, Triton is against the law, and it is. It's big and black and has a whole world hostage. Can't be heard, can't be seen. It's the end of the world and it's a trident to a submarine. Well, 
the judge said guilty, tried his legal for fear of our jails you will collar. But beneath that stern face, the judge is afraid too, but for that job, position, and power. 7,000 Hiroshima's cost about three billion or two. It's a first strike weapon and it's aimed at me and you. Thank you. Next time. But you said there were 5,000 down there for the Trident submarine. Were those spectators or were those anti, or were there, or those protesters? 5,000. Uh, okay, the question is, I don't know if that, that comes on the, on the recording though, but uh, no, 5,000 people are basically um, people who work for Electric Boat where they manufacture the Trident yeah. submarine. This thing is like, uh, couple football fields long and their relatives and friends and also uh, dignitaries, uh, state senators, so uh, national the senators, pardon? The supporters. The supporters. The and we the protesters were, uh, well we would try to sneak into where the, uh, where the celebration was going on, which uh -huh. is a big stadium like. And, uh, and then we would stand up at appropriate time and uh, voice our opinion of what we, th what we thought was going on, which we think is, um, is absolutely illegal to build these things. Um, so that's basically what we have, you know, but you could count on about 5,000 people every time, whether, whether it was commissioned. When it was commissioned, that's, that's when the, the Navy officially purchases it, after it's gone out on sea trials and everything. Um, how, 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 many, how many protesters on an average? How many protesters? Well, we start out with a, uh, at this little park in Groton, Connecticut, which was about a quarter of a mile from where the, the launchings and commissionings took place. And we'd have about, uh, oh, about a, a couple hundred people, mm -hmm. which, and, we, and then we'd have a little parade, a musical parade going down the hill and into where the, uh, where the, ceremony was taking place but there would be probably uh, anywhere from 30 to 50 people that would uh, risk arrest and actually uh, doing blocking type actions and, and a few people that were able to get inside to get these tickets to get inside uh, you'd have to you'd go to a little through a little bit of uh, a thing to try to get those tickets because they weren't readily, readily available. Uh, but it was a regular scene down there, probably one of the most uh, orchestrated uh, uh, arrest scenes ever because it, we all knew quite, quite what to expect from the police. They were so used to us being down there. And uh, But every once in a while, uh, the Ku Klux Klan would come in, and uh, of course they would be they would be supporting uh, the, the, the the launchings and the commissionings, but the police would be there in droves, and we thought it was because of us, you know, the protesters, and they said no, we're there to prevent the John Browns from getting into uh, fights with the Ku Klux Klan. The John Browns were people, John Brown Society were uh, folks who uh, uh, were opposed to the Ku Klux Klan. Of course, that story of John Brown is along those lines. And, uh, but they were not, they did not hold to nonviolent principles like we, uh, the rest of the protesters, who were basically, you know, trying to be nonviolent. John Birch. John Birch. No, John Brown. What? Uh, not, no, not the, not, not the John Birch Society. These are John Browns. Wow. Um, what is the John Birch Society? And are they still active? What's that? I'm sorry. What is the John Birch Society, and are they still active? Uh, the John Birch Society 
Um, actually, it was uh, John Brown that I that I mentioned in my in my song about the Triton submarines, uh, John Brown Society. Uh, John Brown, it was a, it was a violent um, opposition on the part of a white, I believe it was a white, white guy by the name of John Brown, that was opposed to slavery. And uh, they were all, many of these uh, men, uh, largely men, they were, I believe the story is right, they were, they were holed up in a, in, a, in a cabin somewhere, fighting off the authorities, uh, you know, with, with guns. And I believe John Brown was eventually, uh, he was captured alive and then he was executed. But that's a story, it was, it's, a, it's a story of uh, violent opposition to slavery. And, uh, and of course, this society, which take, took its, uh, its actions off of the principles of, of John Brown and what he stood for, were in direct opposition to the Ku Klux Klan. And both groups are violent. And that, but they would show up at these, uh, at these commissionings and launchings of Trident submarines, as well as a lot of other peaceful protests in order to you know, get an audience, but they often made a lot of us angry because we felt like, you know, we wanted our demonstration to be a nonviolent protest. But you can't always count on nonviolent protests being nonviolent because people will show up, you know, when they show up and you have no control over it. Uh, that's, that's basically the story of, of John Brown, as far as I know. Pardon? There's a book song about John Brown's body lying in the ground, right? Oh, yeah, I, I believe yeah. that's, that's part of, you know, the story of his execution. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm going to do... This is called the Obituary Blues. <laughs> you ever get the blues? The obituary blues. coffee on some sunny morning. I gotta start this one over, I can tell. You ever get the blues? The obituary blues? You're drinking your coffee on some sunny morning and Where somebody has died and their life is certified So they died the day they're born When I reach my demise and the coins are on my eyes Do they do that anymore? In my obituary you will prepare On the thoughts I relate as I go to that yonder world out there. Well, I like my backyard. I'm a job, I work hard, and I like to spend time with my family. But if that's all you're gonna say when my life force goes away. I behold the sign I be standing in that wind and rain. Angry drivers going by, 
middle fingers up high, shouting, go home, you commie feather brain. So here's to our stories from the old and the young. Here's to our stories to be told, to be sung. Well, I've been tattooed, and I swim in the nude. But I don't have any rings in my nose. Politicians are for sale, and I'm sometimes in jail when they're unjust laws I oppose. Some lives are tragic, some touch by magic, some are crazy, bold, full of glory. But one thing I'll test as I put the song to rest. Everybody that I know has a story. So here's to our stories from the old and the young. Here's to our stories to be told, to be sung. Thank you. forgot about the harmonica and sort of left that out in the middle, but uh, anyway, uh, let's see, We Ain't Crazy, yeah, I'm going to do that one. What time is it anyway? Well, it's, uh, it's well, I didn't quite expect this big of a crowd, I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know we don't have enough chairs here. Um, this is for the camera. <laughs> Just joking, of course. Um,
Give me guns and missiles to make a democracy. If war won't work, we'll try some diplomacy. That's a takeoff on a song. Uh, she ain't crazy. It's a blues song and a love relationship, and uh, which I didn't think I wanted to turn that song into another love relationship. That's a criticism I have of today's music. Uh, what is really going on here? <laughs> Our relationships are, you know. The, uh, the danger to the earth and ourselves. Well, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do one that I started out doing, but now there's a few more people here. Much is stolen from us from the earth and the sky that gives comfort and wealth to a few but our conscience can never be taken away and it's there for whatever we do with our eyes with our ears our hands and our feet, and the blood circulating our veins. With our fingers and toes, and our mouth and our nose, and it all goes direct to our brains. In these times, I'm aware of a struggle inside between conscience and comforts I've known. As they touch but pull apart, like water and oil, it is clear only one can I know. Try this now. Purchase this. Experience that. Comforts cry out with a boast. But in walking these hills, there's a voice inside that tells me what, ma what matters most. There are times when I'm feeling the sadness and fear of the pain that conscience will bring then dear friends gather round and we lift ourselves up and we laugh and we play and we sing in these times I'm aware the struggle inside between conscience and comfort 
as a touch would pull apart. Like water and oil, it is clear. song okay i'm gonna do it this is a this isn't my song this is a utah phillips song You know that funnel effect when a whole bunch of people try to go to a small opening? They call it they call it the Venturi effect. As you get closer to the small opening, compression. It, it speeds up. Well, I don't want that to happen today. Brown bag lunch. Brown bag lunch. Concert. That's great. Yeah. You don't mind insulated bags, do you? Insulated bags are okay. Yeah, I got to get one of those. I, I carry my lunch at work at the co-op. I carry my lunch around one of these big red and white things. Um, Playmate, I guess they're called. Well. Hey, Breeze, I'm glad you showed up. You and Robin? 
it was quarter of one that had kind of a stressful morning, including a friend beat me to come pick him up and something leave work. And then all of a sudden they went, it's Thursday, it's quarter of one. Dan's down there. So you think they have a Triton submarine off of the coast of North Korea? Oh, definitely. Yeah. One of the 17 remaining? Yeah. They converted, there were uh, 19 of them that were, and they had uh, 24 missiles, Trident II missiles on each submarine, and they were what they call MIRV. Uh, back then, they had, uh, where, where each missile uh, had a warhead with 12 separately independently targeted uh, warheads on it. So they would send the they would send the missile up, you know, up into the stratosphere, and uh, largely guided by you know nav star you know satellites, and then these separate warheads would break off, and they would go to their destined position uh, targets, uh, and hit within 200 feet of the target, which was usually a direct hit. If you get within 200 feet of a target, it's, it's called a direct hit. It means it's going to obliterate everything, no matter what. You know, and these are <clears throat> each warhead was uh, had the capability of about 100 Hiroshima-type bombs. Uh, give Ted you some Cruz idea. Wants, of the, Ted Cruz wants those, you know. Pardon? Ted Cruz wants those to carpet bomb. Yes. Well, under the Obama administration. Um, Obama struck a deal with the Republicans that uh, they agreed that they would they would go for a treaty with Russia, but they said what we have to do, what we need, we Republicans need, we need to upgrade our, our nuclear weapons, and that's what's happening. He 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 agreed to that, even though the treaty with Russia just fell through, you know. We, he agreed to that, and it's going to result in uh, an upgrading of nuclear weapons over the next 30 years that's going to cost $1 trillion. On money we don't have. If you want a, some idea of what a trillion dollars is, you can't even imagine it. If you were to go back uh, 1,500 years before Isaiah the prophet and the Old Testament prophet, you go back another 1,500 years and you start spending a million dollars every day from that time to the present time, that's a trillion dollars. A million dollars a day from, you know, about 2500 B.C. to the present day. I thought the treaty, though, was, I, I thought there was a decrease in, in the nuclear warheads. Well, that, that's what they're doing. They're, they're making these... Uh, Nuclear there's decrease, weapons. There's a decrease in numbers so long as the, the warheads can be. That's what's so deceptive about them. They're, they're, they're cutting down on the megatonnage of the destructive capability, uh, which, is, which can a, appease a lot of people. But what they don't realize is what they're doing is they're, they're making, uh, they're building nuclear weapons. Uh, the smallest nuclear weapon will be a, approximately as powerful as the the largest conventional weapon. And this is something they realized back in the Cold War era of the 80s and 90s, or well, well, up until 91, uh, that, you know, it's called the fire break, and it's a very dangerous uh, thing to be into. Because back then, the smallest nuclear weapons were, uh, they could fire a nuclear weapon from, uh, from, our, from an artillery. Uh, you know, gun. And, and and we had nuclear weapons that were landmines back then. Those were all eliminated, primarily because uh, they would get confused with conventional weapons. So if, if a nuclear weapon went off, a conventional weapon went off, like a very powerful conventional weapon, you couldn't tell the difference between that and a nuclear weapon, and it would get everybody all spooked. And before you know it, everybody's throwing nukes around at each other. So today, at least today, when a nuclear weapon goes off, you know it's a nuclear weapon because it's so powerful. 
and picks up in a seismograph and you know you can the mushroom cloud and everything but they're they're scaling them down to the point where the same point where they're going to be back in the 80s where they where they eliminated them for this reason because of the fire what they call the fire break very dangerous and uh, a lot of uh, you know people who know these weapons very very much are are speaking out uh, you know against implementing the, the you know these uh, this imperative that, that Obama is pushing through uh, but nuclear weapons are not on the public radar these days uh, it's uh, it's just they just aren't you know ISIS is the what ISIS you know, you know oh, ISIS yeah Time to buy organic green beans. Uh, what's that? It's time for me to go buy organic green beans. See at the co op. <laughs> <laughs> organic. Ending on a positive note. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it was a little, it's a little intense stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, think positive. Yeah. Something I'm not always that good at. Well, this uh, it's called realistic pessimism. There What's are that? plenty of realistic reasons to be pessimistic. You know, you've just cited a bunch of them, and that's, in our minds, very realistic. But then, yes, you have to kind of make it better than it seems, you know, to get along with your life. And, you know, knowing that you've got your own fate to work with and life and your own relationship to whatever creates this life, but then you've also got this human contrivance that could just take Brattleboro and make it a half mile hole deep in the ground in one second. You know, it's it's kind of a hard concept for a human being to deal with. I think so. Well, I'm a, I'm a great believer in the power of people to change things. That's not I, so pessimistic. So, so I, uh, even though I, I I sort of tend towards pessimism a lot, I do have. You know, you, you see, uh, of course, we all know, you know, what, what people like Martin Luther King did and, and Gandhi. And um, why, can't have, why can't that happen again? Except we probably aren't going to have any leaders like that anymore, you know. Um, it's it's going to be more diffuse. Um, I heard something recently where somebody said that they used to be an optimist and now they consider themselves a, a possibilist. Possibility. A po possibilist. That they're not so optimistic, for example, about the fate of the planet and the way things are going, but they still hold that it's possible that things could turn around yeah. in a more positive direction. That, yeah. that kind of fits for me. It's not so easy to be an optimist when you're watching the steady decline of the, the quality of uh, the natural life on this planet. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, I think with, with climate change, once, you know, once it gets to a certain point where even the climate change deniers can't deny what's happening. I, 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 I see that as a, as a great opportunity for, you know, worldwide um, coming together of the minds and saying that, you know, we can't be fighting one another. We can't have war anymore because we're all in this together. You know, we're, the climate here is. A, going to affect the climate there it's, it's it's all we're all together you know hopefully more and more people will see that perspective i agree with that perspective yeah i understand that when i walk down the street instead of drive a car but maybe i'm contributing to some farmer's life in africa by not burning more gasoline and it makes it feel like that little sacrifice of walking is a gift rather than some stupid pedestrian on the side of the road, you know? Yeah. But to, to get that perspective understood by many people is a good objective, you know? The judge walked over, sat in his chair, picked up the gavel and shouted out there, 
please forgive me for being so blind. You're not guilty and I resign. They ain't paying for war. The judge not paying.